Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tony the Closer here with my man Josh from Deal Machine. Hey, what's up, Josh? How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great, man. Good to hear. Yeah, man. Appreciate you uh, meeting with me today. This is pretty cool. Uh, you guys have some exciting stuff going on with the Deal Machine app. Obviously, uh, what I what I share and, and what I talk about runs right in line with what you guys do. And I'm uh, I want to just dig a little deeper today and talk to you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise, and we're excited too, given uh, kind of your your background, like the book that you just recently released and everything and talking about um, your experience as a closer, as a salesperson in general, how that applies to wholesaling um, and how like our users, our audience can use some of the experiences and tactics that, that are really natural and comfortable to you to, to just do be better in their wholesaling or real estate investment practices. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, very That's awesome. Cool. Um, so just to kind of kick it off a little bit, I love to... Well, I guess before we jump into too much about the book itself or anything, I would love to know a little just a summary of your background. I know a lot of people are going to see this and from your audience who already know who you are and everything, but a lot of people from our audience who don't know who you are are going to be viewing this for the first time. So maybe just give a little bit like 30 to 60 seconds about your background and who you are. Sure. I'll try to do the mega speed version. So uh, I'm an ex-athlete. Uh, had a short NFL career. Um, after my NFL career, I uh, went into the auto industry. I, I went to go buy a car for my sister, which was which is a crazy story. And she would tell me how successful she was at, at, at selling cars. And I knew she didn't know anything about selling anything at, at the Hendrick Automotive Group. Well, uh, long story short, uh, I ended up needing a job because I was no longer employed. <laughs> so I, I got in the auto industry. And, and in my first month in the business, I sell 24 and a half cars, uh, top salesperson in the company. And I went on for, for about four or five year run where I was a top salesperson, uh, president's club, chairman's club. Uh, so so I, I just found a pretty good niche as far as dealing with sellers and customers and, and people who were in buying situations. Awesome. And then what was the transition from that to real estate for you? So uh, my father, who, who happens to be a pretty strong uh, asset in the real estate REI community, um, but seeing the amount of money I was making and and, uh, and 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 not really investing it, and he was like, "Hey, I think you need to kind of protect your money long term." So we got into obviously we started doing some investing together, started a business together, which uh, was a predominant wholesale business. Cool story is that as this predominant wholesale uh, business was, I'm excuse me, as the wholesale business was starting. Um, one of my friends happened to be sitting in on the conversation as my father and I were discussing our deal, which happens to be Max Maxwell, my good friend. Sure. So Max sits in the corner, he hears us <laughs> talking about building a, uh, a wholesaling uh, company. Max goes and starts researching what was wholesaling, and you guys know who Max is now. So obviously, you know, he kind of, he, he, he got a nice jump start, you know, sitting in the basement, my father and I. Mm -hmm. um, so. Jumped, in, jumped into real estate and I saw that the tactics that worked for me in, in the uh, auto industry translated seamlessly right into uh, real estate because you're still dealing with people and their emotions and, and I just knew how to overcome objections really well. Uh, so I use those same tools to negotiate deals in, in the real estate space uh, mm -hmm. and we've got thousands of deals closed uh, and, and uh, I decided to put it into 21 Proven Secrets into a book. Cool. Uh, so that's been pretty exciting. I, I, I did not expect the uh, overwhelming amount of uh, love that has come from Beyond the Book. There's been hundreds of thousands of dollars of money closed in, in, in a very short period of time. The book's been out just under like 75 days right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we're about 400 and something plus thousand dollars of closed deals. So wow. it's just absolutely, I mean, I'm getting raving reviews from from. People all over my Instagram has been bloomed from about four thousand followers to about fifteen thousand in that same time. Damn, right? that's so, awesome. So yeah, it's been absolutely crazy, and I, I'm just excited about what this book has uh, has to offer. Um, and I, I love the fact that some of the stuff I talk about in my book, like getting in sellers' faces and how you uh, build credibility, uh, you can apply with Deal Machine. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, when I when I uh, talk to you guys and you were saying you tell me about your technology and I start paying more attention to it, it was just was like man I want to meet with you guys and do more with you and build build a uh, relationship because I know the value that this can create for uh, the real estate space for sure. Awesome, yeah. And it, it, one of the reasons I'm really excited about this conversation, in general, just working together more in the future is um, like I like to position Deal Machine as like, we make it super simple for people to find 
opportunities. Right. Find deals, find sellers, uh, obviously through driving for deals primarily, um, but in general, we're just a tool for people to get a hold of sellers one way or another through mail or skip tracing or whatever that right. is. But uh, where we kind of leave off naturally is once they get into that meeting, it's st it's still on them to have the conversation, close the deal, which I think is unique to our users and or, or not just unique to our users. It's general to anyone wholesaling. People spend so much time researching, like, what do I do marketing wise? How do I find deals? How do I get, uh, find people who want to sell their homes? And they forget everything that your book's about is like you still have to have a conversation, interaction with someone. Yeah. And it is a selling aspect of the job you're not just like showing up the contract that they're going to sign there's a whole process to doing that really well and i think it's unique where a lot of wholesalers get to that point in their wholesaling journey and then just kind of fall flat because they didn't even think about the fact that this is a whole far more important element in the end i think than people realize everyone can spend money drive for deals and find people who might want to sell their home not everyone can close it. Well, everyone can close it, but you have to prepare for that. It's not as simple as dollars Absolutely. and dollars out. I, and, and that's the exact reason I put the book together, because I said most wholesalers know the process and what to do and how to find leads to actually get to the person. Not the problem typically doesn't come up until they actually have that interaction with the seller. Mm -hmm. So then once you get involved with the seller and they're giving you objections and you don't know what to say and you panic, or you're facing the anxiety of just not knowing what to do because it's your first time, or maybe even you've been an experience in the business, you just don't know what to say and how to handle certain situations. This is what the 21 Proven Secrets is all about. Mm -hmm. It's helping get you you know, to that next stage with the uh, client where you can now have them saying yes and turn those no's around. So um, I'm, I'm really excited with, with what you guys can bring to the table because I do know my audience asked me for, hey, look, what do you use that can help me get you know in front of people and i say driving for dollars is by far it, the most inexpensive way to mm -hmm. get in front of people and cold calling is next and you guys provide a a, a, a a application that gives them the ability to do both have that information pretty fast and it does more so i'm not shortcutting some of the stuff i know your app is, is pretty thorough as far as even sending out the mail so mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you know i haven't been a big mailer myself but sure. i know the value in it so you, you're making multiple points of contact, whether that be through phone, mail, and this is creating more value. So what you guys have, I'm extremely excited for to share with my audience for sure, mm -hmm. uh, because I know that it, it creates opportunities for more deals to be able to get in front of more sellers. Then you can apply the 21 Proven Secrets to, uh, to uh, really enhance your chances of getting that check. So one of the things I wanted to go over uh, is just obviously your book. I want to pull out. Obviously, we're not going to go through every single twenty, every single step of the twenty-one secrets. Uh, but there's some themes that uh, a lot of times multiple secrets are really applying to. So I just right. want to talk to a few of those bigger themes um, and give you an opportunity just to have an open table sure. to talk about those. So I guess the the biggest thing uh, you kind of open with kind of the roadblock that people have. Um, and the mindset shift that needs to happen for people to realize that this is a selling activity in a way. Um, you're selling people on yourself as a solution, the solution in general, uh, and, and just to get the deal in the end. So what do you think is the roadblock for people to think of it as a sales situation? Um, what can they do to then uh, transition their mindset to like act as a salesperson in this circumstance as opposed to going in, I guess, not prepared well, for those conversations. Well, one of the things I tell people about mindset is like, for one, you got to have passion in what you're doing. You believe 1000% that you're offering a solution that is going to help someone else. I think one of the most powerful things in the world is how can I help you? And, and I lead with that with every single client because I know the value that it brings me. You tell somebody, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm not here to take advantage of you. So I, I tell people that you need to be 1000% committed that you understand that you're here to solve a problem for somebody and that you offer the best solution bar none. So to me, you, when you get your mind committed to something and you 100% believe that, hey, what I am gonna do and what I bring to you is truly a service, something that I know is better than anybody else's and nothing else that anybody else can tell you is, is better than me, period. And I believe that in myself. And I try to push that off to, to everyone that, that I, I share my message with is, hey, look, you have to believe in yourself before anybody else will believe in you. And the minute that you get your mind to the point that you know that you are truly here to solve a problem, 
How can I help you? You change lives and you change lives on a dramatic fashion. People begin to open up to you more. They trust you more. You can get to the, uh, uh, the building of rapport, your credibility and everything all falls in line with, with just how can I help you in mindset and believing that you bring it to the table. You are the best one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you kind of mentioned in that statement, rapport, obviously being right. a big factor. I think a lot of people talk about that a lot. It's important to build rapport with a seller. I think a lot of times it's a very loaded word and means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So when you talk about rapport building, what does that mean to you? How do you, I guess just going into a situation, how do you make sure you do a good job building rapport <clears throat> um, to assist in eventually getting the close? Well, the, the biggest thing to me in, in rapport, rapport to me is like trust. Mm -hmm. Like I want you to trust me. So it's all about, to me, I've always tried to hack the trust equation, period. Like how do you hack the trust equation? How do you get someone that's extremely guarded to be unguarded? Because the reality is that every single person that you meet, you're a complete stranger to them. And you're saying that you can do something that everybody else is saying that, you, that, that they can do as well. So I believe that you have to get people to understand that, hey, look, that's why the how can I help you, I believe is so powerful. Because it doesn't uh, come from a place of like, it's about you. It's about helping them. How can I help you get to your, your goal? Whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. If I can help you get whatever you want in life, everything, everything else that I want will be reciprocated. So the reality is that people can tr hack that trust equation, make it, stop making it about, hey, look, how can you win in this situation and make it about your sellers being the, w the winners in the situation. Uh, that's where all the credibility and everything in the report comes. Obviously, like having tools like Deal Machine where you can see names and, and get contact information to have a conversation that's such informed based off, hey, look, you can see what the, the mortgage uh, was so what the uh, tax values are. When you start getting more data and you can be prepared and have a conversation that's truly professional. I tell people in this business all the time, you have to be a pro. You have to be prepared. And, and when you come to the table and you have information from, from a source that says, hey, look, I'm talking to you credibly. I'm, I'm all about helping you. How can I assist you? And the tools that I use help me in that same fashion. Now you can become, uh, have head, a head advantage over everybody else that's not using technology that way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's two things that you said that are really unique to me that I think people overlook a lot. Um, first is, and I'll get to the second one in a second. First is the fact that sometimes in a rapport building, you're, it has nothing to do, or what they want most in life, has nothing to do with selling a house. More often than not, it has nothing to do with selling the house. Like obviously the house is a nuisance and maybe the money they're gonna get out of it can help with something or, um, or it is a nuisance because they just don't wanna maintain it anymore. But again, so often what they want most is nothing to do with selling the house and you can offer a solution that while purchasing the house helps the other one. So I guess speak to that a little bit, like when it comes to identifying problems, you're not just talking about this house you're talking about literally everything going on in your life you, you you're digging deep and, and that's a great example Just, and it's funny that you say that last night i had i had a seller on the phone um who literally she has to sell a home now because her, she's trying to get surgery done so her pain point isn't that she needs to sell the home the pain point is that she needs the money to afford the surgery and the home is the way to get there mm -hmm. so i understand where her pain point is and what she needs to get there now it helps me be able to get to the process being able to say, hey, look, this is really important to you. I can understand 100% that we need to make sure you have the funds you need to take care of your body and be healthy. So let, let me take this uh, time to now move with speed. I'm gonna get all the information to you as quickly as I can so we can get you the money that you need so you can get the surgery taken care of. Now I don't even make it about the property anymore. Mm -hmm. I made it about her and her surgery. Like we're briefly talking about the house. I'm gonna get you all the information. We're gonna move as quickly as we can. We close quickly. But now I got her so at ease. Her, her mindset isn't worried about, hey, look, this person's over here trying to scam me or whatever, because I made it about her. Mm -hmm. You pay attention to the details of what they actually say, hey, look, that pain point is. The pain point is going to get you the money. You, you got you to gotta take care of their pain first. If you're trying to take care of yourself first, then you're going to make a mistake and you're going to miss a lot of deals because you're not paying attention. You have right. to be a great listener. But, but now this lady is ready to do a deal based off the fact that I know it. I listened to the cues. I knew what it was about. It's not about a house. She doesn't have the money to do what she needs to do for her health. Mm -hmm. So we make it about her health. We, we take care of what the pain point is and then the money follows. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I 100% agree. That's a great example, like you said, from, from last night. Last night, yeah. yeah just that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's, I mean, that's another example of why like this isn't just like a book to be a book to, for people to, to have. It's like legitimately how you close deals and, and every single deal that is successful in the end. I think there's you can pretty systematically point to things that you do in this book or just in general, these strategies that we're talking about are applicable to most scenarios. You, this you can use what's in the twenty one proven secrets in your day to day life. Like I mean, somebody's making a sale every single day. Your child, whether they're gonna brush your teeth or not, who's gonna win the battle of who's what time someone's going to bed. Like we we use these things in every single part of our life. But the reality is that you have to know what to do. You have to know how to uh, handle it, handle it, and position yourself to be able to win those battles every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think what what you know. The preparation and the right mindset, you can really make more deals, you can make more money than you ever imagined, but you just got to know what to do. So, so I shortcut it and put it in a book for everybody mm-hmm. so they don't have to take the, the five years of my <laughs> learning, you know, and I just put it all into a little recipe. I cooked it up and I, you know, I made yeah. something I feel really, really proud of. I wish I had read this book at the beginning of the year. And I have a sales background, so I'd like to think that certain elements of these, well, maybe not naturally, but I practice them over previous things in my career. Um, but I've had about 30 appointments this year and only two deals out of those appointments from properties that I've added with deal machine while driving. And looking back at like so many of these uh, appointments, like I knew I had missed opportunities because I didn't go through these things. Like actually an old um, uh, boss slash coworker of mine would call it getting happy years uh, for salespeople where like they, someone calls you and says, I need to sell a house fast. And you're like, boom, like, oh, it's a deal. Like, I can get it. They need to sell it faster, super motivated. And then you get there and you inspect the house and you're like, you're like just confirming you need to sell fast. Great. And then you get to the point you go through, the, you go through, you skip so many of these steps that skip this book goes through. And you get to the point you present an offer. And in reality, like, you didn't really solve their problem because they said they need to sell a house fast. And you thought that was the problem, but again, we're talking about the problems are behind the scenes on all these different things. And so, like, again, for me, I've, I think, a couple of things. I've gotten happy years many times throughout this year and the appointments that I've been on because they say one or two of these things, like, hey, come inspect my house, I want to sell it. But in reality, like, you need to not skip these steps. Even if you think the deal is so locked up, it's so important to go through this process, build report, understand the, the needs. So when you do present a solution, it's, it's really driven by uh, what their actual underlying need is. And, and the reality is that everybody won't say yes the first time. So that's where you get into secret 21, which is the follow up. Mm-hmm. And how aggressively do you follow up? And I think so many people, I think it's a stat that says less than 25% of people make uh, one call. Over 75% don't make the second call. Mm-hmm. So you got a lot of people that, I mean, you do the math. I mean, after that second call, it's just, you mean, that deal is done. Mm-hmm. In their mind, that person, you know, they said no the first time. Oh, you probably won't even hear because so many people make that re- uh, that rejection. I mean, that objection, rejection, mm-hmm. where people fear the rejection so bad, like they take it personally. And now that, that deal is completely sabotaged because you're you're taking a, a no as a personal attack on you versus understanding that you're here to solve a problem for somebody else and it's not about you. Right. So the follow-up is so key in, in, in everything in life. I tell people every single day, if you want something, you go get it. And you go after it as aggressively and as relentless, relentlessly as you possibly can. Um, and that doesn't mean be a scumbag, but that means that you show that you care. You put the energy and the effort into solving the true problem that someone has. If you solve someone someone's problem, the money's going to follow. Mm-hmm. Too many people are trying to solve their own financial problem and they're not taking care of the people that they say they want the money from. Yep, absolutely. Uh, my second point from earlier was something that you had mentioned a couple of times now is preparedness. And, and so we talk about like the fluidity of the conversation to build rapport, figure out their needs and everything. But that's just in the moment when you're in the house or meeting with them, talking th- this through. There's a lot of stuff that you can and, and should be doing before you get to that point, before you even show up at the door. Can you speak to a little bit about what you recommend to people to, to have done already before they actually get to the appointment? Absolutely. I, I tell you to be a professional. And, and when I say that, that means when, you, when you're being prepared, you've done all the homework necessary to be able to solve a problem. 
if you take your job serious, it doesn't start the day of. It doesn't start once you walk into the house. It happens before you, uh, as soon as you hang up the phone with that client, now I start my research. I'm getting comps, I'm seeing like numbers, I'm seeing what, what, what's selling in the area. Are there any other properties that are listed in the area that are available for sale? I need every bit of ammo I can use. So as I get in contact with that seller and I have that face-to-face -face meeting, I can come with information that makes sense because you back up your numbers and you justify everything with sense information. Mm -hmm. Like you just don't say just because I think it's worth this. You show by numbers. You give information. You give you give you give the people all the informa information they need to make an informed decision. Like it's not about trying to manipulate anybody. I say, hey, here here's why my numbers are what they are. I justify my numbers with information. Hey, this house down the street sold for. One hundred thousand dollars. This house down the street sold for fifty thousand dollars. I know you would like the, the high end, but we got to make sure it makes sense for everybody. And I can now give you all the information, not just from a high number or just a low number, because I think the biggest mistake that investors make is they only try to show the low numbers. Mm -hmm. Like the homeowner hasn't uh, seen the high numbers. They can all go on Zillow. Like, yeah, it's so, so, so everybody sees time. it already. So you're trying to manipulate somebody, and you lack credibility just out the door. So mm -hmm. I think being prepared, but also being credible, I put all this stuff into the 21 Proven Secrets for a reason, because these things are so critical into, into your success. And, and when you have people who, who truly take being prepared seriously, you walk into someone's home, they can sense if you're prepared or not. Mm -hmm. Like they know if you've done your research because you better believe they know what they're, they're, the neighbors always know what the numbers are. Mm -hmm. They know what somebody else's house was sold for. They know everything about their neighborhood. So if you if you walk in and you don't take your job serious, they won't take you serious. If you don't establish yourself as someone that can be credible, uh, an authority fig figure, because you do this for a, a profession, so you look the part, you, you know, that's that's all critical into getting the the the, the seller to say yes mm -hmm. um i think too many people think it's just about showing up to the door and, and having a pen like no you have to do all your homework prior to getting there to be able to position yourself as a credible source absolutely 100 percent. I, I love um like position you mentioned uh, you mentioned in the book talking about positioning yourself as a thought leader in the space and understanding it and i think that can mean in a macro real estate sense it can mean in a micro local market sense like you just you whatever ways you can whether it's knowing the comps really well knowing repairs really well um, on top of doing the reports like the expertise that you're bringing to them is helping them understand their options and for you to be able to do that you need to know those numbers you need to know like if they listed the house and wanted to wait 100 days on market what could they get for it because maybe that's 100 grand more than what you can give them on the house and if they have the time and effort and, and willingness to go through that time like that could be a better solution and like, that's fine if you can explain 100%. that awesome yes you you want to give all the options even if that means that you don't do business with them mm -hmm. you're there to help them like the biggest thing i think people do is they, they make it about themselves because guess what the person that might list it with the realtor may come right back to you because you were the person that gave them all the information and you were honest and, and had integrity or if you don't get that deal Hey, guess what? They have friends, family that might also have a home for sale. And they say, hey, I have a guy for you. I wasn't able to do business with him, but he was amazing. She was amazing. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to make sure that you put yourself in a position to always win, even when it seems like you haven't got that particular uh, deal. I, I've had countless deals that it took me years to close a person, but I followed up so aggressively. I mean, years after the fact. And guess what? In the meantime, they were sending me other people. Mm-hmm. I didn't get his deal, <laughs> but he was sending me yeah. other people. Yep. I had a guy, Paul Cole, who literally, he was sending friends every, I mean, he was like, he was like one of my best, I mean, he was like, he worked <laughs> for me. So, so it's, it's always important to make sure, even when you don't get that person to say yes right away, to always treat them like, hey, look, they're the best person in the world. You give them all the information. You, you give them the ability to make informed decisions. That's what your job is. Mm -hmm. If you assist them in their process, if you, if you are the best solution for them, they're going to do business with you. Right. Period. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Um, kind of leads me to my next big point, asking for the sale and, and closing, actually. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with, especially people who haven't been doing this this long, each of these steps feels like very, like, I need to check this off the list. I need to check that off the list. I need to check that off the list. But a lot of times in these conversations, it's not as it's not that situation. It's not that fluid where it's just like step by step right. by step. Um, so, 
I guess my question is, how do you identify when to try and ask for the sale without like disrupting rapport building, without, um, without like forgetting, skipping a step or something like that? Like when do you, how do you identify when to ask for the sale and how do you present that initial ask for the sale of, for you uh, and sure. gets the best reaction? So, so one of the things I do is I, I always ask for the sale every single time I, uh, I go to a home. I don't believe in negotiating over the telephone. I believe doing it face to face. So I'm all about setting the appointment. And when I go to my appointment, I'll, I'll kind of set the, the stage of what, what to expect in the next 30 minutes or so that we're together, potentially an hour, depending on you know time and what we go through. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll tell the seller, hey, look, I'll, I'll love for you to give me a tour of your home. You can uh, show me you know all the things that you like for me to see. I'm excited to be here. Um, after we after we tour the property, I like to go over a couple of options that that I potentially have for you that could potentially make some sense for you. Um, you're not obligated to make any decision today, but if you feel like something makes sense to you, you you know we, we're more willing to, to do this deal today and close quickly. Um, so I'm setting up the stand the stage for what what, what they can expect during the visit, uh, and then it's all about positioning. So once I once I uh, I let them walk me through the house and I tell them how lovely their house is and I can't wait for their house to, uh, to, to be mine. I, uh, I, I'll, I'll position myself literally next to them. I, I don't want to sit across the table from them. I want to be sitting side by side. I'm not, I'm not here to combat with you. I'm here to, uh, to give you a, 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 all the information to make a decision, period. Even if your best decision means doing uh, business with with a realtor, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that, and I'm I, I'm 100% committed to giving you the best solution. So if I am the best solution for you, awesome. If that means you have to use a realtor or, or sell it on your own, so be it. That's fine. That's also awesome to me too. So I really position myself. Hey, listen, I'm here to give you all the information. If this information makes sense, I'm going to give you a pen and pad so you can sign here. Mm -hmm. But it's also about, let me make sure you, you got all the information that helps you make the decision. And I sit side by side. It's we. We're a team. It's team us, Josh. We mm -hmm. got to get it together. So as we as we negotiate, I want us to understand that, hey, look, if these numbers aren't, you know, exactly what you're looking for, is you know, I, I, it might shock you at first, but we'll be able to work through it. Okay, I appreciate all the time we spent together. So I'm setting, I'm kind of setting them at ease. I want to be very comfortable. I want to be open with me in conversation so I can get more matter of fact because mm -hmm. I haven't at this at this point I haven't talked about any issues in the property. I've literally only said this is a beautiful house. I love this house. So now all my notes that I mentally had that I didn't write on the pad because I never write my stuff down. I just want them to you know to be at ease. I don't want to walk past the the leaky ceiling and and, and be writing with my pen. I just right. make a mental note. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a professional, I already know what I'm looking for anyway. So then as I get in front of them and we begin to negotiate, hey, look, I got a couple offers for you. I have an as-is offer. You sell it to me as-is. I have an offer for you if you fix these items. Then I might have a creative option over here for you as well. Which one of these work best for you? Now slide it over to the uh, the seller. Let them let them take a look and see what I let them make a decision. Mm -hmm. Does this work right here for you? Yes or no? I need to think about this or that. I give them the opportunity to kind of evaluate and give them options. People love options, so giving one one offer is always bad. I give you one offer as is and one offer if you fix this stuff I need uh, fixed right here. Mm -hmm. But I make that number so big that you know most people won't have an interest in fixing 30, 40 grand worth of uh, right. stuff. <laughs> You know, but you give them you give them options. Hey, look, I'm gonna give you a cash offer, which is gonna be probably not ideally what you want to take, but I'm gonna make it to my advantage. Every offer is to my advantage, mm -hmm. but you get to win if you if 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 you're motivated to sell. It's all it's all about creating something that's you know obviously appealing to to the seller's eyes right. because if the seller has a, uh, a a high motivation and they're trying to get rid of this property. Uh, and, and it's a pain point to them. I want to give them so many solutions that one of them is going to make sense to them. But I want them to always be where I, I can have a gain out of it as, as well. Right. Um, so positioning is key. Uh, I believe in making sure that you tell the seller that we are on a team. So, you know, I'm setting the stage that, hey, listen, I haven't negotiated or told you anything bad about your property. The number is always the easiest part of my job because it literally is. You get to make a decision on numbers whether they work or not for you. I'm going to give you my expert opinion on what your property is worth as is, or if you fix some items for me. Mm -hmm. 
that's you know it's up to you if you want to fix these items or not i mean most people don't most of my customers just let you know take my as is price but you just you you make a decision that works best for you which one of these mm -hmm. work best for you i need your initials here i need your signature here you, you just make it about hey i asked for the business right yeah i like the as is offer too i think a lot of people talk about aka a uh just a normal cash offer or like a creative financing offer like an owner finance scenario right. or something like that but uh, I don't think I've haven't heard a lot of people talking about like breaking down an as is offer or like hey if you want to fix it up and I think that does a couple things. Most prominently, it gets them thinking about the fact that a lot of repairs have to happen. Correct. Almost often, almost always. There wouldn't be in this conversation with us if there weren't some. It wasn't something wrong with the property usually, and so it gets them identifying. Hey, like that's an expenditure. That is a t that's time, um, and then there's it, it, a lot of effort that goes into getting to that like higher price because it, it, it takes money to get there. It takes money to get there. And yeah. so I think that's awesome because it, it helps it helps position then your as is offer is like they understand why it is the offer that it is lower than the number that almost certainly that they initially wanted um, and everything like that. So I, I, I really like that. 100%. Yeah. And I, I've done the cash offer and then like the creative financing offer and stuff like that, but I've never done like an, two different like essential cash offers um with people love stuff. options right people love options man I, I mean that was the biggest thing in the auto industry i show you a payment of 48 months 60 months 72 months no money down 1500 down three grand five grand down i don't you know i, I want i want you to have as many options as you possibly can mm -hmm. you get to make the decision which one of those fits is best for your budget and what you hope to accomplish me i'm just trying to give you all the information right as much information as i can give you is, is all I'm, i want to do i want you to have the informed decision to make Mm -hmm. I'm just here to give you all the information Absolutely. over and over again. I, I just I love telling people that the information is key because when information is power to your seller. Right now, now they can feel confident that the decision that they're making is based off something of, of, of like, hey, OK, I got everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm not having to second guess myself. This is the, this is the option that I feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. it, it, it works. It works a lot. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, so I think all of this is are really, really good ideas, things that people need to go through each and every meeting. I think the unique thing about all of these is it takes practice to do all of them. It's sure. not something that you can just go into a meeting and remember all of this information that you, you want to be doing and or do it the way in which is the correct way to do it in a meeting. And so you talk about practice uh, in the book as well. There's actually, I think you say like practice the right things. Um, I think that was the, the big element. It actually reminded me, uh, an old football coach at my high school would always say, like, practice makes perfect, but in reality, it's perfect practice makes perfect. Correct. And, and so it's not just about going through the motions and, like, thinking these through. It's actually really uniformly practicing these things, practicing your script or at least how you pitch things, how you talk about things, what questions you want to ask. You need to go through that to perfection to do what you want to do in these meetings. And so I guess talk a little bit about how you go about practicing preparing for these meetings. Yeah, so one of the things I tell people, and, and it's, it's probably the most critical you, thing you can do is, is, is put yourself in a position to, to negotiate as much as you possibly can. And, and I tell people all the time, like, hey, look, I don't negotiate over the telephone. There's reasons why I don't. What happens is the more that you're, you're putting yourself in position by practicing, even as a noob, if you're in this business, or even if you're a seasoned vet, we get rusty. You, you, if you go, if you go a certain amount of time, you know, just not doing something, you won't, mm -hmm. you won't be as comfortable doing it. At, if you do something on a daily basis, now it becomes extremely comfortable to you. So when an objection comes to you, your, your rebuttal smoothly comes out. But if you're fumbling and bumbling because somebody's got you off guard with a reply that they said to you, and you don't know what to say, they won. You're going home and letting them think about it now because you, you didn't know what to say back when they said they need to think about it. Mm -hmm. So you say, hey, OK, I'm going to tuck my tail and go home. But if you start putting yourself by literally remembering that, hey, look, the steps are simple. I practice what, what I do every single day. I take this as a profession. What is like not just practicing, but practicing the right thing. And practice makes permanent. But you want to make sure people understand. I say practice makes permanent. It's extremely important that you, and that's why I'm trying to brand it into people's mind that you role play. You do these things because when you take time to really invest into yourself daily, 
not not every every couple of weeks or whatever, but because you take this business serious, you do this daily. As you get in front of people and they give you rebuttals, as they tell you certain things, you now know, hey, I'm here to I'm here to help you. How can I assist you? Your rebuttals and everything are all about the fact that I'm here to provide you with solutions that'll help you uh, have a winning uh, winning uh, solution. Period. Not for me to take advantage of you. I'm not like everyone else. I'm not going to come unprepared. And this, this goes to your comps and everything. It's just not practicing on, on a script. It's not just practicing mm -hmm. on on uh, on what to say when the seller says uh, no to you, but it's about how you literally practice your habits of being a professional every single day, your preparedness, how you how you uh, dress, every single thing all boils into how you practice this thing. It's a big deal. I think sometimes people kind of mm -hmm. want to like micro it into just like, hey, I'm practicing a phone script. It's not just about practicing the phone script. It's about how you, you practice positioning yourself, how you practice being an authority, how you practice being credible. Like it's it's a big scheme of, of, of understanding. Like people view you like you might be shady. You're, you're coming to my house and right. you're trying to buy my money for pennies on a dollar. If you come in here, you, you can't look the part, act the part, be a professional. Then you're, you're, that stigma that everybody else wants to label you as will come. So mm -hmm. it's very important that you come in as a professional. It's very important that you know your, your information, that you can give information to help somebody make informed decisions. Like these are how you, you know, really take people to that next level. This is how you get people to let their guard down. And this is how you get people to say yes and they do business with you time and time again. Um, and that's how you close thousands of deals. Awesome. Very cool. Well, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that, that were, those are the big things about the book that I wanted to emphasize from selling to building rapport practicing and preparation and asking for the set. I think those are like throughout the book, I think the five kind of key, five or six key phases that happen in the transaction that you need to, to really focus on. So yeah. uh, very awesome. Um, I guess for me, I, I'd also love to transition a little bit, uh, not necessarily just about Deal Machine, but maybe talking about more generally just some tools that you've been using consistently uh, or you know of people that have been using consistently uh, to find real estate opportunities out there. Um, I mean, honestly, man, uh, I've, I've always been just big on like the driving for dollars and, and, and seeing what you guys do. You, you, you seem to have it all. Uh, when you, when you think of a software that can literally give you, uh, your, your skip tracing, you can take a picture of a property and now that mails that, that exact picture to the property with, 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 a, uh, what, what, uh, are you interested in selling your property, uh, mm -hmm. postcard? I think some of that stuff is so powerful. Um, to have it at the ease of your cell phone is absolutely ridiculous. So I get a lot of people that tell me, hey, look, I don't have a lot of time or, you know, I'm kind of limited in some of the stuff I have. And when you put all that stuff and source it into one single app that uh, that is that powerful, I'm extremely excited about it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking to take it to the next level of my own personal business with uh, using Deal Machine. Uh, when you have somebody that, that can literally go like that and I can walk up five houses and pull information as I go, uh, just seeing that technology is, is going to be, I'm extremely excited to try to implement that into what I'm currently doing. Um, other, other, uh, other, other apps out there or, or, or sources I use, obviously, like as far as, you know, maybe pulling lists from list source, uh, uh, investor carrot mm -hmm. is, is another, um, Obviously, just the SEO aspect of, right. of that, uh, and then uh, REI Rail. Um, you, you know, I think you guys may be cooking something up pretty soon. <laughs> Most likely, I might I might be letting the cat out the bag a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, those are, are kind of the uh, ones I look at. Awesome, very very cool. Um, I think one of the last things I wanted to go over, uh, we spoke yesterday about a uh, program that you're going to kind of be launching throughout 2019 and really focusing on um, called the Homeless to Wholesaler program. Right. Um, and I'd love you to just have the opportunity to talk a little bit more about why you're passionate about that program, what it is you're really trying to do, how others might be able to help, um, just anything to that effect. Sure. So uh, Homeless to Wholesaler, it's a lot of impact and what that just means to me. Um, so Max and I had a our world tour <laughs> earlier this year. And uh, while we were in Houston, Texas, I, I uh, saw a gentleman who was scraping up food off the ground. 
and it had a big impact on me. It just, it didn't sit well with me. And, and I gave him some money, but I, I still felt very unsettled. And uh, I, start, I, I just started brainstorming on ways I can help people who are less fortunate than I am. Um, and, and quite honestly, with, with, with some of my past, I could have been pretty much homeless uh, if, if I didn't get into the right lane uh, and, and have the, the tools that I have available to me. So uh, this Homeless the Wholesaler project that I'm doing is I, I want to take my closing ability and take it to the next level and share it with people who are less fortunate. So uh, in 2019, I, I will begin to share a vlog on my YouTube channel, uh, Tony the Closer, uh, which uh, I'm going to take a couple people who are uh, less fortunate, uh, homeless, maybe some people who've been in some uh, pretty tough situations, and I'm going to teach them how to wholesale. And I believe it's important that, you know, they say, hey, look, you can feed a man, uh, but if you teach him how to feed himself, he can eat forever. And, and I want to make sure that I can, I can change someone's life and have an impact that's greater than just walking around and giving them a dollar or two. I want to be able to make somebody know that, hey, look, no matter where you are on planet Earth, you can go and have a, a, a closing ability that can take you to another level. Um, and I want people to know that, uh, that not just about looking at yourself every day and trying to be a winner, Mm -hmm. But helping others who are less fortunate uh, can literally be the difference in, in uh, changing a life. Uh, so some of the things that just I've I've, uh, I've I've been impacted by in in the last year and meeting so many people through uh, what Max and I have done, um, I wanted to make sure I could have an impact on a lot of people who weren't as fortunate. So. Uh, this homeless wholesaler program uh, will literally change lives. I am uh, hoping that obviously with Deal Machine we can partner and do some things to where uh, I'll take and use some of the, those tools to help streamline some deals into the pockets of some guys who are a lot less fortunate. And when they see the tools and how the, how easy it is to implement, mm -hmm. uh, plus using the 21 Proven Secrets. Uh, we can we can help put some people in positions that they will no longer have to be using the shelter to put uh, for for uh, where they sleep at night. Um, being able to put themselves in positions of being entrepreneurs and, and controlling their own destiny, and I just think that's so important that that you know moving into 2019, people take a uh, not a me look first, and I know a lot of people look for for how they can gain. I'm also looking for personal gain for myself, but I think the biggest gain comes from from helping others. So I'm extremely committed to, to this project and I plan on making this a, a uh, challenge to not only me, but a lot of other investors who are in this field as they watch what I do. Maybe it influences other people to stop looking over people and help people who might not be as fortunate as we are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I think uh, I can say on behalf of Deal Machine, happy to we're excited to help, and so I'm we excited do, for it. What we can do to, to help make that happen for your, you guys and for the people that start with that program. Absolutely, I think I think I know we're having technology that can get phone numbers and and do some of the things that Deal Machine offers. Uh, in addition to the, the commitment that they'll have from me uh, in any aspect of closing and being able to be as sharp as they need to be to get that deal. We're going to close some deals. We're going to <laughs> close some deals and I, I, I'm, I'm more, more importantly going to change some lives in, in closing those deals. Uh, and, and I'm extremely excited. And I'm, I'm thankful that you guys will take part in that because that makes that process even easier because you know, I tell you, I believe in what you guys have as a product. Um, and, and to be able to have something that can kind of short short line and, and get get us in, in more informed uh, prospects will be just mm -hmm. I'm extremely excited about it. I'm I'm, a, I'm 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 ready for everybody to see what's happening very soon. Awesome. Well, as we're signing off, I love and you mentioned the YouTube channel that you're that you're doing there. I guess just kind of say like, what are all the places that people can find your book? What do you want to? kind of plug or talk about so people can make sure that to find you um, online and all that good stuff. Sure. So uh, my Instagram is uh, trob56, T-R-O-B-5-6. Uh, the YouTube channel is Tony the Closer. To find the 21 Proven Secrets, you can go to TonyTheCloser.com. 
Um, once again, that's TonyTheCloser.com. I'm so excited about this. If you, if, you, if you guys understand what this book can do for your life, what Deal Machine can do as far as adding to your business, this stuff that we're, we're talking about can literally change and elevate your business, whether you're a seasoned vet or you're a noob in the business. Mm -hmm. And that's the most critical part. It doesn't matter if you know it all or you just get into the business. When you have the ability to have informed conversation, you, you create instant value when you can... Uh, when you can do that and, and instantly get a whole lot of credibility to be able to move forward in that process of getting that, that deal. Um, so I'm extremely excited that we can uh, kind of partner on this stuff, uh, Josh. Deal Machine is uh, absolutely incredible. And I'm, I'm, man, I can't wait for 2019. Awesome, yeah, likewise. And, and just so everyone knows listening, uh, you can find Deal Machine at dealmachine.com, um, as well as if you just type in deal, deal Machine for Real Estate Investors on either the Google Play Store or the Apple uh, App Store. Uh, you can find the app there, give it a test, we have a 14 day free trial, all that good stuff. Um, socially, uh, we got a big Facebook group uh, that's a deal machine community group where people just talk about strategies for driving for deals, how to find and prospect properties, how to talk to sellers, how to close deals, all that good stuff. Um, a lot of good conversation from seasoned vets there. Uh, and then on Instagram at deal machine app, uh, that's uh, how you can find us and get our content and. Uh, Give the machine a try. All right, man, guys, cool. if you like what you've seen in this channel, like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your post notifications. Can't wait to see you next time. See ya. Good luck, guys.